Hi, this is Dr. Jennifer Smits, clinical pharmacist educator with RX Prep. We receive a lot of phone calls and email questions about biostatistics and the best way to master the material. The biostatistics and pharmacoeconomics chapter in the course book covers the vital information, but sometimes it's helpful to look at things in another way. The data can be presented in different ways, causing it to appear confusing at times. You may see the data presented in table or abstract form. So today we'll use an example and walk through how to approach a question and not become overwhelmed by the data presented. We will cover common calculations and conceptual information. Let's get started. First, let's read the methods section. To compare prazogrel, a new thionapyridine, with clopidogrel, we randomly assigned 13,608 patients with moderate to high risk acute coronary syndromes with scheduled percutaneous coronary intervention to receive prazogrel, a 60 mg loading dose and a 10 mg daily maintenance dose or clopidogrel, a 300 mg loading dose and a 75 mg daily maintenance dose for 6 to 15 months. The primary efficacy endpoint was death from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal myocardial infarction, or non-fatal stroke. The key safety endpoint was major bleeding. We can see that this is a study involving patients with ACS who will undergo PCI. Patients received one of two antiplatelet medications, prazogrel or clopidogrel, which as you know are given to reduce the risk of thrombotic complications. Now let's answer a question based on the methods section. Which of the following statements is true regarding this study? Answer A. A patient enrolled in this study was more likely to be assigned to the prazogrel group than to the clopidogrel group. It states that patients were randomly assigned to a treatment group. When you think about what this means, obviously it indicates a randomized trial design Another way to say this is that a patient was equally likely to be assigned to the prazogrel as the clopidogrel group, so answer A is not correct. Answer B. The study design is randomized placebo-controlled. This is an important point. This study is controlled but not placebo-controlled. It's comparing patients receiving two different drugs, prazogrel and clopidogrel. This is an active control study with the patients receiving clopidogrel serving as the control group since at the time of the study it was an established treatment. Prazogrel would be considered the treatment group in this analysis because it's described as the new drug. So answer B is not correct. Answer C. Patients were assigned to receive clopidogrel for 6 months or prazogrel for 15 months. Let's look and see if this is correct. Patients were assigned to receive prazogrel or clopidogrel for 6 to 15 months. While a study patient may have received clopidogrel for 6 months or prazogrel for 15 months, the specific duration of each agent was not assigned as part of the study, but rather ranged from 6 to 15 months. Even though the numbers look familiar, this is not a correct interpretation, so be sure to read carefully. Answer D. The study was designed to detect a difference in a composite endpoint. You can see that the primary efficacy endpoint involves three different outcomes, death from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal myocardial infarction, or non-fatal stroke. This is called a composite endpoint. Let's take a moment to talk about composite endpoints. What is it? It's when multiple individual outcomes or endpoints are combined for the statistical analysis. For example, in this case, death from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal stroke, or non-fatal MI were combined for statistical purposes. Some key things to remember about composite endpoints. If any one of the individual outcomes occur, a primary endpoint is counted for the statistical analysis. Additionally, the endpoints must be similar in magnitude. For example, you couldn't choose death, MI, or cough. Those wouldn't be equal in magnitude. So why would a composite endpoint be used? It allows a study to be completed more quickly. So answer D is the correct answer. It is designed to detect a difference in a composite endpoint. Answer E, the primary endpoint was death from cardiovascular causes. Since we just discussed the composite endpoint, you should easily be able to tell that this is wrong. Death from cardiovascular causes is only one component of the composite endpoint. The data could also be presented to you in table form. Here you can see many of the same things we just discussed, 
let's take a moment to get oriented to the data table. On the top, you can see that the data are comparing the Prazagrel group and the Clopidogrel group. The primary outcome is listed near the top as well. Even though the individual elements of the primary outcome are listed separately on the data table, because the investigators chose to use a composite or combined primary outcome, all of the statistics for the primary endpoint are based on the data for the composite not the individual components. So be aware of this and don't get distracted by the individual components unless the question specifically asks about one. You can see that the data are labeled so you can tell what you're looking at. The number of patients is listed with the percentage in parentheses. And on the right hand side, the outcomes are listed as a hazard ratio with a 95% confidence interval and a p-value for the statistical analysis. One of the first things I like to do when looking at a study or an abstract is to restate the findings in my own words. So when I look at this data table and focus on the primary endpoint, I can see that 9.9% .9 of patients in the Prazagrel group experienced a primary outcome event versus 12.1% of patients in the Clopidogrel group. So there were fewer thrombotic complications in the Prazagrel group, which indicates a benefit shown by Prazagrel. The hazard ratio is 0.81 with a 95% confidence interval of 0.73 to 0.9. Since this is ratio data, I'm looking to see if the confidence interval contains 1. Since it does not include 1, we can conclude that the difference was statistically significant. The p-value is less than 0 0.001, which also indicates statistical significance in this case. From there, we can look at the safety data. If you recall, the key safety endpoint was major bleeding. When you look at this table, you may see terms you're unfamiliar with, like Timmy major bleeding. Try not to get distracted by this and just focus on the one labeled key safety endpoint, unless the question asks for something more specific. I can see that major bleeding occurred in 2.4% of patients in the Prazagrel group versus 1.8% of patients in the Clopidogrel group. So after looking at the primary efficacy and safety endpoints, my overall impression of this study is this. In this study, Prazagrel demonstrated a statistically significant benefit over Clopidogrel in incidence of the primary composite endpoint, those three specific thrombotic complications, but major bleeding occurred more often in the Prazagrel group. Now that we're oriented to the study, let's move on to some other types of questions you might be asked. Calculate the absolute risk reduction in the primary efficacy endpoint. As you know, the absolute risk reduction, or ARR, is simply a difference in the risk between groups. So the risk in the control group minus the risk in the treatment group. A common mistake we see is when someone tries to add up the individual values to get a composite endpoint. This is not a valid approach. You can prove it to yourself that this won't work by adding up the individual outcomes. For the Prazagrel group, if you add them up, you'll see that 669 individual outcomes occurred, but the composite endpoint was only recorded 643 times. This is because a patient could have experienced more than one of the individual outcomes. Remember, the composite endpoint says that if A or B or C occurs, it will be counted. Since any of these counts as a composite endpoint, a second endpoint in the same patient wouldn't be counted twice. So for this reason, we'll stick with the composite endpoint data. So our risk in the control group or clopidogrel group is 12.1% minus the Prazagrel group, or the treatment group, which is 9.9%, giving us an ARR of 2.2%. Calculate the relative risk reduction of experiencing death from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal myocardial infarction, or non-fatal stroke. Express as a percentage and round to the nearest tenth. Hopefully you recognize that this is asking about the primary efficacy endpoint, the composite endpoint. We first have to calculate the risk ratio, or RR. RR is equal to the risk in the treatment group 
over the risk in the control group. So in this case, this is equal to 9.9 .9 divided by 12.1 for a risk ratio of 0 0.818. Now we can calculate the relative risk reduction, or RRR. RRR is equal to 1 minus the risk ratio. 1 minus 0 0.818 is equal to 0 0.1818. Because the question specifies to express it as a percentage, we'll multiply by 100 for 18.18% and then round to the nearest tenth, 18.2% for our relative risk reduction. Please note that the relative risk reduction can be stated as either a percentage or as a decimal so be sure to read the question carefully so you can express your answer appropriately. How many patients would need to be treated with Prazogrel to avoid one additional death from cardiovascular causes, non-fatal MI, or non-fatal stroke? This is a number needed to treat question. As you know, the number needed to treat is one over the ARR. Do you remember what our ARR was? For the ARR, we took 12.1% minus 9.9% for an ARR of 2.2%. But for the number needed to treat, we always use the ARR in decimal form. So in order to get that, we'll take 2.2 divided by 100 for an ARR in decimal form of 0 0.022. Now we can plug that into our number needed to treat. So number needed to treat equals 1 over 0 0.022, giving us a value of 45.45 repeating. Remember, number needed to treat is always a whole number, so we have to round the answer. This answer would be rounded up to 46, even though numerically we wouldn't normally round it up. With a number needed to treat, we always round up to the next whole number. We never want to underestimate the number of patients it will take to see a benefit. So in this case, the number needed to treat is 46. Another question might be, what's the absolute risk reduction in non-fatal MI? This question asks specifically about one component of that composite endpoint, so we'll narrow our focus and we'll only look at this specific data. This is really the approach you'll use for any question. Narrow down what's being asked and ignore the excess information on the screen. ARR is the difference in risk, 9.5% in the clopidogrel group, minus 7.3% in the prazogrel group for an absolute risk reduction in non-fatal MI, again, of 2.2%. You could also be asked an interpretive question. Based on this study, which of the following statements is correct? Treating each of these statements as a true or false question can help you avoid getting overwhelmed by the information in the abstract or data table and the answer choices. So let's take a look at each statement. Answer A, clopidogrel demonstrated a statistically significant benefit over prazogrel in the incidence of the primary endpoint. This is false. We can see that the primary endpoint occurred more often in the clopidogrel group than in the prazogrel group. This would not be a benefit in favor of clopidogrel. Answer A is incorrect. Answer B. Prazogrel demonstrated a statistically significant benefit over clopidogrel in incidence of major bleeding. Now we'll jump over to the safety table with the bleeding endpoints. Major bleeding occurred in 2.4% of patients in the Prazogrel group and 1.8% of patients in the Clopidogrel group. This would not be a benefit over Clopidogrel since more patients in the Prazogrel group experienced major bleeding. Answer B is not correct. Answer C, Clopidogrel demonstrated a statistically significant benefit over Prazogrel in incidence of the primary endpoint and was associated with fewer cases of major bleeding. We've addressed both of these statements even though the second half is true, major bleeding was less frequent in the clopidogrel group. It was prazogrel that demonstrated the benefit in the primary endpoint. Answer C is also incorrect. Answer D. 
Prazogrel demonstrated a statistically significant benefit over clopidogrel in reducing the primary endpoint. This is true. The primary endpoint occurred less often in the Prazogrel group than in the clopidogrel group. This was statistically significant as noted by the confidence interval and the p-value. This is the correct answer. For completeness, we'll discuss answer E, which states there's no statistical difference between clopidogrel and prazogrel in the primary endpoint, which we just discussed. Prazogrel showed a difference that was statistically significant. Answer E is not correct. You could also be presented a data table in a more simplified format like this one. Which of the following outcomes demonstrated a statistically significant difference? Select all that apply. For a select all that apply question, I will again treat each of these as a true false statement. Starting with answer A, primary endpoint. We'll draw our eyes to the top of the data table and look at what we can see. Clopidogrel 12.1% versus 9.9% in the Prazogrel group. So there's a numerical difference. The hazard ratio is 0.81. For statistical significance, I'm going to focus on the confidence interval. Since we're looking at ratio data, if the range includes 1, this means there's a chance that the ratio could be 1 to 1 between groups, which of course means there would be no difference. Since the interval goes from 0.73 to 0.90 and does not include 1, we can see that this is a statistically significant difference. We'll go through the other answers in the same manner. Answer B, death from cardiovascular causes. We can see a slight numerical difference. When we look at our confidence interval, however, 0.7 to 1.12, we can see that 1 is included in that interval. So this is not statistically significant. Answer C, death from any cause. A slight numerical difference again, 3% versus 3.2, but when we look at the confidence interval, 0.78 to 1.16, 1 is included, so this is not a statistically significant difference. Answer D, non-fatal stroke. There's not a numerical difference, and this is borne out in the confidence interval, which does include one. No difference. Answer E, non-fatal MI. We can see a numerical difference again. When we examine the confidence interval, 0.67 to 0.85, one is not included. This is a statistically significant outcome. So when we go back to select all that apply, answer A, primary endpoint, and answer E, non-fatal MI, would be the ones that demonstrated a statistically significant difference. You may recognize this as the example at the end of chapter 10 on page 177. Even though it looks different, this abstract contains the same information we just went through. The primary efficacy endpoint occurring in 12.1% of patients receiving clopidogrel, 9.9% of patients receiving prazogrel, Hopefully you're familiar with these numbers by now. The major bleeding endpoint also listed below with the numbers we recognize. So even though it looks different, it contains the same information as the table. Now that we've talked through the questions for the study using the data tables, you should be easily able to identify the pertinent information and come to the same answers. And with that, we'll conclude the biostatistics tutorial. We hope you found it helpful. Thanks for tuning in.